So in uh, 2010, we made the um, questionable decision of taking our family summer vacation, myself, my wife, Ava, and our then 14-year-old son, Dominic, uh, as a 10-day 10 10 day bike tour of southern Austria. This indicates clearly that my wife is German because we never would have done such a thing otherwise. By the last day, all of us and our collective butts wanted it to be over. Uh, but on the morning of that last day, we were lost again. And at some point, we emerged from a forest into a, onto an orchard. And in, in this large field under the trees were dozens, if not hundreds or over a hundred cars. Why? We didn't have any idea of why. There was a village over there. Maybe it's a Saturday market, maybe it's a music festival. In any case, we didn't care. We turned away from the village and we're soon back on the proper bike path. And it was a kind of a mixture of rough asphalt and gravel. And mercifully, it was a nice downslope. So we're cruising down this slope and I'm an idiot. So I decided to see how fast I could go. I had a speedometer on my bicycle. I'm watching it 38, 40, 42, approaching 45 kilometers per hour. And I thought, this is a good time to check the map. So I <laughs> to reach into the saddlebag and I didn't see the depression across this bike path that allows the water to run down into the river on the other side. My wife was behind me. She says I flew two meters over the saddle of my bike. I'm a little dubious about that, but nevertheless, the cartography, the cartography of my scars indicates that I had enough kinetic energy to tumble several times before coming to a stop. At some point in this process, if the part that met the road surface was not my shoulder or my elbow or my knee or my hip, but the left side of my face, several layers of which were just effectively scraped off from my hairline to my chin, including the removal of my uh, right eyelid and tear duct, which is why I'm now never without a tissue. Um, I, was I was not aware, I don't remember the active part of that accident, but I was conscious immediately afterwards because I heard my son, Dominic, standing over me saying, Ach du Scheiße. Ach du Scheiße. And I was completely in shock. I never felt any pain. I was laying on the ground on my right side, so they could see the left side, um, in a fetal position, of course. Uh, and I just said, it's okay, boo. It's okay, it's going to be all right. I don't know why, I, <laughs> clearly it was not going to be. They were trying to find my phone, and just as they were getting really panicked because they couldn't find it, two elderly German couples came along, also part of the same bike tour, it turns out, and they took charge. We called them later the good Germans. One of them called an ambulance, one of them, one of them took Dominic aside, one of them took Ava aside, one of them held some kind of handkerchief over my face to shade it from the sun. But there's not a lot more they could do. This was not a apply pressure to control the bleeding kind of situation. And so we were just waiting. And I was laying there quite comfortably, watching the blood run across the road towards the river. And it might have been a long wait uh, in this location. But then after, I think, two minutes, I'm told, a car comes down the bike path. It's just wide enough for a car. There's a man driving and a little boy. Turns out they were going fishing in this river. The man stops, he gets out, he approaches, he, Ava starts to approach him, he looks around her at me, he turns and goes directly to the back of his car. He is an emergency medical technician, and he has a, you know, a field hospital in the back of his Subaru station wagon. He gets his kit, he comes over, he takes one good look at me, he cancels the ambulance, calls for a medevac helicopter. He tells me that he's going to put me into an artificial coma because in case I have a skull fracture or brain swelling, and he, and I say, sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then he goes to work cleaning up and, and, and controlling the bleeding on what he calls the ville de wunde. And shortly after that, I was, I was out. And then I was in the chopper going to Klagenfurt. And when I woke up the next morning, I didn't have a skull fracture, I didn't have a concussion. Uh, miraculously enough, I didn't have a broken nose or even a chipped tooth. Uh, but it did take eight surgeries so far to create and optimize uh, some semblance of a lower left eyelid. Um, we soon figured out that it couldn't have been a, uh, a farmer's market in that village because it was a Sunday. 
And it wasn't just any, any Sunday, it was Maria Himmelfarb, this Assum Assumption Day, right? In this village, and why, why were all these cars and all these people in this village on Maria Himmelfarb? Because it was a village called Maria Eiland. Maria's suffering. It is, it is the place to be on Maria Himmelfarb in Catholic Austria. Uh, Dominic says, how can anybody call their village Maria Eiland? <laughs> um, and then, uh, a few weeks later, we got the police report for the insurance claims, and we read there, this guy who just happened to decide to go fishing, and just happened to come across the accident minutes after it happened, and just happened to be an emergency medical technician who had the skill and the knowledge and the equipment to treat me there and my wilde Wunde outside of Maria Ehlen on Maria Himmelfahrt. <laughs> His name was Josef Engel. <laughs> now we get to the culture question. My mother was a pretty devoted Christian, and when I told her this story, she said, Tim, if that doesn't make you a believer, nothing will. <laughs> and my mother, as so often, was right. It didn't make me a believer, <laughs> and, and nothing will. <laughs> but nevertheless, maybe it wasn't a coincidence that two or three years later, we decided to take our summer family vacation at a resort without bikes <laughs> in Southern Austria. And one afternoon, we took a drive to that little church in the middle of Maria Island, and we lit candles for Joseph, the angel. Aww.